Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back and we are thrilled to support you towards your journey to achieving success as a certified nurse educator. If you are here for the first time, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to this channel. We release a new episode every single week. If you are looking for more content and other programs that we offer, we encourage you to go over to our website, drsellerseducate.com. We have a monthly group where we meet and we talk about topics related to the CNE and CNECL that are going to help you close your knowledge gaps as you move one step closer to achieving success with a passing score on the exam. Our mission is simple here at Dr. Sellers Educate. It is to support every nurse educator to achieve a certification by NLN on the CNE, CNECL, or CNE novice exams. And remember that we are here to support you until you are successful. In this episode, we're going to continue our conversation in looking at the educational learning theories. Now, this continues to be a gap for many. Um, nursing theory and educational theory are one of my passions that I enjoy teaching about, as well as talking about as you continue to better understand these concepts. All right, so let's take a look at our presentation. If this is the first time that you're tuning in to hear about educational theory, you want to make sure that you have the resources in front of you as you are working towards closing your knowledge gaps, okay? Our three primary resources that we use here at Dr. Sellers Educate are Billings and Halstead Teaching and Nursing. You want to purchase the sixth edition, okay? That's going to help you make sure that you have the most current content and that you are looking at relevant content, okay, as it is aligned with the exam blueprint. And then the second resource you're going to make sure that you have is Dr. Caputi's review book. Now that is critical if you are on the journey towards CNE. If you are taking the CNE CL, then you're going to purchase Teresa Schellenberger's resources that are down in the description. And that's where you're going to find most of the content that we'll be talking through as it relates to the CNECL exam. All right. And then your third resource is going to be the customized comprehensive study workbook that is published by Dr. Sellers Educate. That too, you can find right here in the description. Our next theory that we're talking about is humanism. Okay. When you take a look on page 258, in Billings and Halstead through 259, and then also in Appendix A in Dr. Caputi's book, that's where you're going to find these key concepts that we're going to be talking about in this snapshot. Remembering that learning theory simply seeks to explore and really connect the relationship between the concepts that we are talking about with each of these theories and the actual learning process. So what did this specific theorist or group of theorists discover about the specific aspects of humanism? Okay, what are those tenets? What are those relationships that we should ensure that we are connecting with the classroom experiences that we engage our students in? Remember that we always like to start with the practice question, and you also want to go ahead and take out your worksheet, okay? So there is a worksheet that you can find in the description that's going to help you stay focused as you move forward with your seven-week study plan. That study plan is detailed out in the study workbook, okay? So you want to make sure you spend 90 to 120 hours as part of your seven-week study plan to make sure you're closing your knowledge gap. So let's take a look at this practice question. Humanistic education emphasizes the effective aspects of development to promote a student's sense of responsibility and mutual respect. Which teaching strategy would most align with this learning theory? We have the four choices listed here. And what's going to happen is we will take a look at some content and then we'll come back to this practice question. So you can pause the video here. If you wanna go ahead and use your resources that are in front of you to help you better understand the content related to this question. Remember that our practice questions we develop right here at Dr. Sellers Educate, and we use for the most part a two or three part question, which is similar to what you're gonna see on the CNE exam. Now we are not endorsed by NLN. We do not write questions for any of the exams. We believe in using the content from these resources to develop practice test questions that are going to help you better understand what the question would look like for you to be required to apply the concepts that you are learning about or that you are validating through your seven week study plan. All right, so you may see a two part question, which is what's in front of you or a three part question. 
the difference between a two part and a three part is that there would be a scenario listed here. Okay, so remember the question starts with the statement, and then the second part would be a scenario or a study. So it could be um, student a student is struggling with understanding some of the key concepts associated with care of the heart failure patient. Okay, and then it could be the third part of the question, which is what's listed here, which teaching strategy would best support student learning through understanding of these concepts as an example. All right, so this is a two-part question. So we're gonna keep moving forward with the content. All right, so for each of the learning theories that we're focusing on, we have broken it down into three categories, the learning concepts or tenets that are associated with the theory. And then the second part of those teaching strategies, what do you wanna be mindful of as you are integrating the various teaching strategies into your teaching plan? And then third, how do we evaluate related to the specific learning theory. We know that the best practice is to ensure that we are integrating not only different learning domains. So we have three learning domains, right? As a fresh refresher, go ahead and write those down. And then I'll circle back to those once we complete our content review on this slide. Um, so that's, first of all, making sure that you integrate various learning domains in our learning or our teaching plan. And then the second part is making sure that we are also exploring across the Bloom's taxonomy, right? That we are integrating and exploring teaching strategies as well as evaluation methods across all of the levels of the Bloom's taxonomy. We know that remembering is the lowest and then creating is that highest level of Bloom's taxonomy. So back to our content, when we think about humanism, um, there are two tenets that we want to consider. Now, there are others. Remember that this snapshot is intended to provide you with a good introduction of the concept that we're focusing on. And the goal is that you will use your study workbook to guide you in closing additional content um, or knowledge gaps that you may have tied to the content. And then the second expectation is that you are engaged in either a live review or a self-paced course, okay? You really need to ensure that you're having, um, that you're taking an in-depth look at each of these concepts so that you don't show up for the exam and be and you are surprised, all right? So we map all of our content to each of the learning, the competencies and the domains associated with our learning theories as well as our teaching strategies and evaluation methods. All right, so humanism learning theory specifically, considers that learning occurs at the individual level, that our students, our learners make decisions based on what their values are and what their needs are. So students are able to identify, for example, care of the heart failure patient if they're not sure about um, blood flow and what happens to the body when heart failure occurs, then they're going to make that independent decision to shore up on those skills that they will need in order to provide safe patient care, all right? So they're making those decisions internally and as an individual. Um, the second tenet is that the learner's goal is to become self-actualized and they want to be driven by their internal motivation to achieve a specific goal. So in order to do well in the clinical experience, they're gonna do the work because they understand the humanism component related to the safe patient care practices. All right, and then second is the teaching strategies. So we are looking at making those student-centered decisions as part of our teaching plan. We are thinking about the exchange and the really facilitation of conversations that we have to engage in with our students so that they can walk away with a meaningful experience and they're able to again, be able to practice safely, making those independent decisions. Self-actualization is so important when we think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the importance of students scaffolding their learning. We want to be able to enrich them with experiences that are going to close their knowledge gaps so they can, um, first of all, be successful on NCLEX because they would have understood the connection between what we teach them in the didactic setting and what they apply in the clinical setting. All right, and then second of all, ultimately, it's so that they can make safe patient decisions, um, being self-aware as they move towards um, independent decision-making. And then third category is evaluation methods. So we wanna model respectful behaviors, right? We want to engage with our students to a level where we're understanding where their gaps are and 
we are sharing with them some recommendations that they should consider in order to close those knowledge gaps. We wanna ask student questions that allow them to really draw on their experiences. This is so important, especially once our students um, are at that junior level, we want to engage them in the learning process so that they are able to reflect on their past clinical experiences or their past professional experiences as well, it, especially if we have nursing students that are at the graduate level um, and those that are even at the undergraduate level, pre-licensure program, they are gonna have great clinical experiences. Many of them are CNAs or maybe in other areas of healthcare. So we wanna engage with them to leverage those experiences as part of our evaluation methods. All right, so as we wrap up, our time together. I know this one was a little long. Um, we want to go back to our practice test question. So again, we have four choices here because we're looking for the teaching strategy that most aligns with that humanistic education approach. A is flip classroom to engage the adult learner in pre-class activities. C are those icebreaker activities that allow connection with other students and faculty. C, post-conference activities that focus on following evidence-based practice. Or D, reflective journal assignments to identify gaps in clinical application. If you chose B, icebreaker activities that allow connection with other students and faculty, you are correct. This is again gonna give us a chance as the educator and the facilitator of knowledge to be able to connect with our students and our students to be able to connect with them with each other um, so that they can connect in that um, the caring way. I know humanism, when you think about this specific theory, um, one of my favorite theorists is Jean Watson. Her work definitely comes to mind. Um, and you're going to see in some literature references, you're going to see, um, especially in our text, you can see caring on page 259. It clearly has a strong correlation to the humanism um, learning theory, but also you may see it cited in some texts. Gene Watson's work connected to the behaviorism um, learning theory as well. All right, so hopefully this has been a great review for you related to, again, the humanism learning theory. Make sure that you reach out to us if you have questions, info at drsoseducate.com. And we hope we see you in our monthly boot camp. It is one hour every third Saturday. And we also have a special that we'll go ahead and share with you all right now. And um, we have a discount code that's available for those early adopters to join our community, um, our monthly boot camp. And we're going to be starting something a little new in 2023. We're adding more content to our monthly boot camp. All right. We're even talking about perhaps a weekly boot camp. So more to come on that. But for now, it's monthly and you can find more details on our website with all of our programs. And until next time, we hope to see you in our upcoming episode as we continue to explore educational learning theory. Have a great one, everybody.